Ciao, I'm Nick Stellino. I'm picking up some ingredients for my good friend, Chef Lawrence Chu, from Chef Chu Restaurant in the Bay Area. Today, he'll be making for us basil beef and his famous chicken salad. I, in turn, will be making pasta, aglio, olio e peperoncino, and pasta al filetto di pomodoro. Please join us. Nick Stellino Cooking with Friends is made possible by Domino Foods, makers of c and Sugar, pure cane sugar, and makers of Domino Sugar. We'll always be your sugar. Additional support and appliances provided by Electrolux, manufacturing appliances for over 80 years. For more information, visit us online at www.electroluxappliances.com. Additional funding has been provided by Arteza Vineyards and Winery, Napa Valley, California. To learn more about the wines of Arteza and the Carneros Growing Region, please visit ArtezaWinery.com. Arteza, the jewel of Carneros. One of the world's fine olive oils and vinegars. Pompeian complements salads, marinades, sautéing, grilling, and baking. Pompeian makes every day better. More information available at Pompeian.com. Hi, my name is Nick Stellino. I'm here with Lawrence Chu, my oldest friend. We've known each other for 15 years. His restaurant is in Los Altos, California. Chu's, if I remember correctly. Thank you very because much. Because every time I go with you, you don't even let me look at it. You just <laughs> take me right in. And I'm very excited. He has great mastery, great technique, and he's going to share with us one of his favorite recipes. Chef Chu, I would be honored. Thank you, Nick. This is my favorite dish for my family. It is uh, comfort food. Started with a three pounds of a frank steak. which Chinese people love frank steak, have a less fat, but you have a grizzle on it. So when you buy a frank steak, you see this part, but you look at that, there's a lot of grizzle behind. Watch carefully now. It removed all the grizzle right at the top, very simple. And it, this is a fact, it removed that a little bit. And then flip over, see anything else in there? Seems there's only thing right here. Nice and neat. I love a frank steak. There's not much uh, fat in there. Here, <laughs> you cut it into three sections. It's like about one inch apart, and here. That's how you cut it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing. You're like an artist. You just don't know how good you are with that knife. Hey, Look at that. In a restaurant with serve 800 people, you better be fast. Oh and my at home, God. you want to be fast. You cannot all day long. Here, by cutting, you, you see what I'm doing? You're I'm going against the grain at a slow bias. The, absolutely. Not only that, to make a beef more tender. Okay? After time, we're doing right there. We'll put this away. i show you how to actually just try to Tenderize the meat a little bit. This is more than just tenderize, actually. And it's trying to balance a little bit. When you slam cut this, when you look this way, mm -hmm. they are evenly. Yes, By yes, doing yes. that, it's trying to flatten them. So what am I going to do? I'm going to assume you all this already done. I put it into the, the water where it has a beef tenderizer. Right Perfect. Here. I try to soak it in the water a little bit. This action will make the beef more tender. In, in America, we have, a, you know, we can tenderize the meat by aged meat. Mm -hmm. In China, we prefer manly the meat. The boats was for the purpose for men. After we manly it, and, you know, after we soak it in the, and the tenderizer, and the 30 minutes later, it will become like this. Forgive me, you just put it in straight water. You didn't put anything else. No, so baking soda. Baking soda? That or beef, uh, tenderizer. I got right you. There. Yes, sir. OK, good. Now, well, after this, we manly it with a little bit of garlic powder, a little wine, and soy sauce, and the eggs. We have something like this. This we do it earlier. The wok is hot, All ready to go. Good. So we marinate it. Give me the ingredients of the marination. What marinate did you put in there? A little garlic powder. A little garlic powder, then? Soy sauce. Soy sauce. A little bit of wine. A little bit of wine. dry sherry. Yes. And of course, we'll have a, let the marinate well, let the flavor penetrate the beef. Let me ask you, like when, if, if you were to do this at home out of the restaurant, five minutes, 20 minutes, how much would you give it for the marinade uh, to Man, penetrate the, the meat? 20 minutes. 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Very, so easy. very easy, very and quick. This is the first part of it. The second part, which is important, is eggs and the cornstarch, it, it will create a crust. This crust will keep the juice inside the individual, the meat. Watch right here. Here, the wok is hot. We're ready to go. Put the oil in there. Okay, the wok is hot. And then put the beef there. What we're trying to do today, we try to pan fry them. After pan fry them, the wok has to be hot. Come on, give me a little juice right there. Which is not bad, because we have so many pieces. What we're trying to do is pan fry them and we braise them at the same time. The braise, what we're trying to do is try to let the garlic, chili, ginger, 
and the basil. Of course, what's called basil beef is a lot of fresh ba basil. What's the basil beef? What is the basil? There is a Thai basil and regular basil. Thai basil has more subtle in taste. You can find it in the Vietnamese noodle place. They can eat it, you can sell it. And you know, in Taiwan, which I was uh, and, uh, raised and uh, educated there, we use a lot of basil. Here we go. Okay, a lot of fresh. Look at the basil right here. I love it. Fresh basil. What's the difference between the Thai basil and regular basil? Look at that. The stand. Nice and brown. Look let me at see. That. Let me see this. So this is the defining aspect. Absolutely. Here. So the leaves almost look like the same, but this coloring in here, this is what says it's Thai basil when people go and shop and look for it. it normally, it's true, but you know what? Sometimes you look at the color as well. Okay. So we, we have some this. The color of brown. Oh, color. little, little brown, brown tints that go on the right outside. Here. And yes. the shape is a little different too. I get Again. you. I get now we you. need this on the side, and we're here. Come back right when we seal the meat on both sides. We're ready to go. It's all fast this. Look the color. Look the brown there. Look at this. At home, I would just use the, in the restaurant. We open like we just uh, tossed it, walk them. We're all done. Now here, let's go back right here. You had a main ingredient. You had a couple main ingredient. What is the spice goes in there? Chili, of course. Chili, nice chili like this. I want to cut it this. So you, know, you take this chili and with your skillful knife set, boom, you're turning into yeah. this. If you want a hot, or depend who's on cooking for dinner, you can leave the seeds in it. Okay. The okay. garlic is important. The roasted garlic. I love Italian roast garlic. I can eat with them, love with them. But to, to do that, this is also, that's what we cook so the first. We want the roasted hot would be better, but this is also the basic way in we which it gets done. We used, we brown a little bit to get the flavor, try to cook through the garlic. I get you, sir. Okay, good. Also ginger. Oh, yeah. This is ginger. Ginger, we'll cut in the half, you can see it. And but this, this is what you've done with the ginger. You were very yep. attentive, you peeled it all the way through, and simple. you just used that. Okay, simply just cut it. Very important, just cut it like this. Ginger done. I'm done. telling you, you give me a heart attack, but I cannot believe how good you are with this thing. Hey, Chinese chef, I do something right. Uh, more than fast. something, more than something. Oh, For yeah. those of you that don't know it, we have performed on stage many years together, and I knew that Chef uh, Shu was a master because when he came down to it, People in the back, the people that were working the show with us, would always finish his food first. I mean, there was a line of all the people working at the show just so that it could have his food. My pasta came a close second, but his was always first. Hey, why are you talking? I'll put a sesame oil in there, Nick. Yes. Just going to speed up a little bit. You try to brown a little bit so it can actually cook through the garlic. So garlic no longer just fresh garlic. It becomes the roasted garlic. That's what I'm doing right away. So you want to get a little bit of that going. Now, once it's just going to cook a little bit, and then immediately we'll put a chili in there. Chili, you need a flavor comes out. You need a more time to do it. And ginger. Oh, yeah. And the lower part grain a little bit later, okay? And I stir a little bit. Oh, yeah, look at I it. wish you could smell the aromas. They're fantastic. It's opening. It's like a flower. It's like a now, rose that's blossoming. Cooking Chinese food, especially walking, it's, it's not how, how long you cook, how high the heat is. It, it, it's uh, ability to cook with your senses. Watch the cooking. You can see ingredient changing color. You can look the smell. Look the steam. And, it can, and then you know when you proceed. It's not how long it could three minutes, three minutes. I you look at that. you and I see me with a Chinese yeah, accent. Did I tell you that? You're full of passion. I love that about you. That's the reason why we've been here for four I years. I love what you do. Here. Sorry to disturb you, Chef. After the flavor come out. And you've got to let the flavor develop. Sometimes we put everything in there, or 30, sec 30 seconds, 30 se uh, under, or 40 seconds. No, you do that. Just look at it. In green chain color, listen to see so you know what you're doing. Now you taste a little bit here. Here we go. Let the flavor enter. And this time, instead of stir fry now, we're actually braising. What's that mean? To let the flavor develop. The flavor from ginger, chili, and, the, and also garlic, and the juice from the, the beef mm -hmm. is still coming out. This time, we have the sauce right here. The sauce will follow the recipe. Equal part soy sauce, wine, and sugar in there. Soy sauce, wine, and sugar. Okay, That's sugar it. Sugar will be not too much. Sugar to taste. You let them put a little bit first. Okay, let them go in there. You have to know what capacity, what kind of what sink pack capacity you have. Yes. Sometimes you put overload of wok, you lost the heat. Cooking Chinese when wok cooking, you have to always keep the same temperature all the time. Consistency. Yes. So in order to get a flavor. But this for we can let it go a little bit because we're braising. Look at that. The sauce starting to reduce. Reduce a little bit. And this time, the fresh basil is coming. Fresh basil, you pick them out. You do not want to stand. You only want the leaves. A little more, yes. A little more. Look at this. Now the flavor coming out. Beautiful. <laughs> Nick, could you do me a favor? Yes, right away, we, Chef. We have a little clay pot back there. I'll get it right I away. Want you bring for you. Oh, yeah. I can smell it. Look at this. Wow. Yeah. Let it further develop. Let the flavor further develop. Okay, now. 
This is so hot. Watch it, this all we're gonna do. It. You, you turn this off right here, you put this right here. Put it right here. And immediately, you cover. You cover this first. Before you cover it, put this in there. In the top, okay, here. And then put a little wine here. There's a little wine on the side. On the side of the pot? Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Now, but first, and when you bring a table, yeah. when you show off in, in front of the customer, look at this. The smoke comes out. The, the flavor from the, the, the basil, the garlic, the juice from the beef, all developed, all achieved together to create the sauce we've been waiting for. Basil beef. Nick. You're a genius. I love the way you do it. This taught me a lot. I cannot wait to take this home and try it myself. Uh, we're going to come back with another recipe. I'm sorry I kind of lost it, but this is one of those times when you see something that you see a whole universe of possibility. Let me show you another great recipe. Chef Chu has another wonderful recipe. Chef Chu. Thank you, Nick. This is, a, I want to share one of my four star dishes. Quick, healthy, simple, delicious. Fits a lifestyle today. Here, we have a lot of iceberg letters, but first thing first, we got to do the rice noodle. 375, Everybody, I remember what you told Everybody knows rice noodle right here, but this is so hard that is. But once we put a, you know, 375 degrees, not 350, not 375, look, here we go. Do you Whoa. see what I see? Yeah. Do you see what I see? <laughs> Oh, look at this, how beautiful that is. Immediately removed the oil out of there. Do not, right here, looks like this. Put it, so let the oil drip. This is what we need, a very important a part of the chicken salad. Here we go. We have it roast chicken. Yes. You can have a deep fried chicken, sting chicken, any chicken left from last night, fine with me. But roast chicken smells good, I love it. Iceberg lighter, shred it. Look at that, how beautiful, carrots. Get a color in there, Sh carrots, and then cilantro. Very important. Cilantro, I want to pinch cilantro right on top of it. Let the juice get on the top. Now, very important. Not just something just to chop earlier. I don't want to chop earlier the last minute. Have some ready for the later on, put on the top. Here we go. The first thing first. Chicken salad, unlike other salad, put the dressing on the top. Yes. Uh, what's my salad, for, you know, what's my dressing for salad? I'll say, this is a, like a, you know, almost like a Caesar salad. It's a mix within. First thing is five spices salt. But two pinch for this much. Five spicy powder mixed with salt, very important. You toss a little bit. The reason why you do that first, so the flavor, but easily to you know, distribute it throughout the, the whole salad instead of one side right here. The second thing you follow by the hot mustard and sesame paste. Those things you mix well and you put it on the side. This is what makes the salad on the side. On the side, you know why? I want to see, I want to see. Because then you can mi mix easier. When you put it in, the only can see right here. This so you can see, you, you flow within, you mix within. Look at this salad. And then immediately in this time, make sure, well, and then this, here we go, this chicken right here, look at that. So many chicken right here. And this time, the sesame seeds, the rose of sesame seeds, and the crushed peanuts, look at this. Crushed peanuts right here. And then you put it all together, look at this, and then very important, and the rice noodle, you put a half in there. And half of it, you got a moat right there. Look at this, how can you go wrong? The fresh, you know, iceberg lettuce, carrots, cilantro, you know, and the sesame, roasted sesame seed, roasted peanuts, look at this. And then you know what? And to the end, put all together, okay? This is what the beauty comes in, together. And it's just on the last minutes, the sesame seeds on the top. And the little bit carrots. Oh, look at me, how beautiful. And the rice noodle. Absolutely important rice noodle on the top. And the finally touch which Chinese parsley. Look at this. For life, for for quick, healthy, simple, delicious. Look at this. Nick, that's it. Chef Chu famous chicken salad. Here we are. You know what? I, I, the salad is fantastic. But I gotta tell you what is most beautiful. Most beautiful is to see something that inspires me, and I hope that when I mature, I get to be as passionate as you are, not just about the food, but about life. The way you move, the way you bring people into, the mastery in which you do something as simple that involves simply dressing the salad. For a while, I got lost myself, as I saw you with this wooden spoon, going from side to side, bringing it back in. Chef Chu, it is an honor to have known you for 15 years, and even more than that, it's an honor to call you my friend. Thank you very much. Yes, Nick, thank Ciao you very much.
Pasta al filetto di pomodoro is a very simple pasta dish to put together, but it requires a little bit of attention to detail. We have some nice uh, extra virgin olive oil that we started to warm up to this. We add garlic. This garlic has to be sliced thick. Notice that the garlic is not fizzing and popping because we want to bring the garlic and the olive oil to temperature together. One of the things that you want to avoid is to have the oil so hot that as soon as the garlic hits it, it goes from brown to burn. At this point, we want to add a little bit of red pepper flakes just for a little bit of heat. And here comes the trick, basil. Basil, in this particular case, we're going to add it a little bit at the beginning. Watch what happens. The basil is mainly mostly of water. As soon as it hits the pans, it brings down the temperature. And you see what it does and also starts to splish and splash about. And here is the tomato. Pasta al filetto di pomodoro means made with the filet of tomatoes. These are tomatoes which have been peeled, core, seeded, and then cut in small dice. Right now, they're picking up the flavor from the sauce. The sauce is the olive oil that is absorbing all these beautiful flavors on the inside, giving us exactly what we're looking for. At this point, you want to add a little bit of salt, and if you have it available, a little bit of sugar, especially if these tomatoes are not the kind of tomatoes that you bring in in summertime, which is the perfect time for the tomatoes. In wintertime, they tend to be a little bit less impressive in terms of flavor. Once we get to this point, the next thing that we want to do is add the pasta. We cook this pasta ahead of time, spaghetti or spaghettini. This is a typical Italian move. I, love, I just love holding the pasta like this. It reminds me of my dad, my grandma, my uncles out on the farm in summertime when the fresh tomatoes will be brought out. It's amazing how sometime when you cook, the thoughts of the past come back to mind and then flipping it together. Uno, due, tre, quattro. Every step, every move, everything means something. And these tomatoes right now are caressing the pasta. The pasta and the tomatoes are dancing together. To you, it might just be a recipe. To me, to me it's a trip down memory lane, something that I love, something that I adore. Um, the last touch that you want to make is adding a little bit of cheese. My wife always likes Parmesan cheese, but I like Romano cheese. So in this particular case, this is exactly what I do. But as I add the Romano cheese, one technique that's extremely important. You must turn off the stove. Why must you turn off the stove? Because now we're going to toss the cheese and the pasta together. As we do this, the cheese goes underneath. It hits the bottom of the pan. If there was still heat underneath, one of the things that you would not like is that the cheese would burn, attach itself to the bottom of the pan, and ultimately give you an extra job which you wish not to undertake. So how about we make now pasta with aglio, olio e peperoncino? Aglio, olio, peperoncino, the simplest of all Sicilian pasta, yet something to which you need to pay a great deal of attention. We have olive oil in the pan. To this, we add an enormous amount of garlic. This garlic has to be cut fairly thick, otherwise it will burn. This garlic ultimately is the ingredient that's going to give us the flavor. The olive oil itself is the sauce, and this is what most people uh, miss. So at the beginning, when you actually turn it around and you stir it, as we're doing right now, you want to make sure that the garlic starts to brown. While the garlic is browning, the next Next thing that we need to do is to add the red pepper flakes, and here's where it goes. This is for just mildly hot, but since this is called peperoncino, this is what I like to add because I love it. If this pasta we were to add uh, anchovy paste, then it would be called carrettiera, pasta alla carrettiera. Same connection on the pasta sauce that we did before applies to this. What we're going to do now, we're going to add the parsley. Please pay attention, I'm moving this away from the heat. We need to add the parsley to bring down the heat. The parsley is going to make this fizzle and pop, but at the same time reduces the heat right before we add the other ingredients. In this case, the other ingredient specifically is the pasta. The pasta itself that we have cooked ahead of time, mixed with a good amount of olive oil so it does not stick, spaghetti or spaghettini, if you like. That would be just as good. Now we're going to turn them around exactly like this. The part that I love actually more than just turning them around is doing it old-fashioned. Now a lot of people become concerned and say to me, but Nick, 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 what are you going to do next? How are you going to absorb the oil? And there is a technique that's part of the Sicilian heritage, and that is 
toasted breadcrumbs. We just simply preheated this pan, and to this pan we have added once it's gotten nice and hot breadcrumbs. No oil, no butter, nothing else. Look what I do. I'm just sprinkling the breadcrumbs on top of it. What are these breadcrumbs doing? They're going to be picking up uh, the extra virgin olive oil that by now is imbued with all the flavors of all the ingredients that have been so beautifully presented. I'm going to give it a couple of toss and turn. And this pasta would be exactly where we want to have it. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. The oil is completely gone. Do you remember how much oil there was there before? It's almost like a puddle. Doesn't exist anymore. This is the finish that we intend to do. I've just turned off the heat from underneath and we're going again with the next. This one, there is no argument. You cannot use Parmigiano, you cannot use Grana Padano, you cannot use a Fontina. It has to be Romano cheese. And once again, the reason why we turn the heat away from underneath is to avoid in this turn any of the cheese to burn at the bottom of the pan. So here we are. Now, why don't you take a look and see some of my suggestions in terms of beverages that will be a perfect match for this pasta. For more recipes and tips, visit nickstellino.com. Now I'm going to show you what to serve this pasta. This is a fork from a carving set. And I'm going to use this because this is the best tool to make the most elegant twirls with the pasta. Let me show you exactly what I mean. Here's the pasta we just finished cooking. You turn it, you turn it, you turn it. You bring it right up into the middle of the plate. Turn, turn, turn. This belongs right here. There is always a little bit of independent pieces they want to ride away, but that doesn't matter. Again, because if you're going to serve pasta, there's no point to go just enough. Look at this, and then here is what you've done. And this is how you serve it, this is how you bring it to the table. But there is one more thing that I want to do to this pasta, and allow me to show you what that is. Cheese, as much as possible, so that it falls as if it was snow. And just because this has peperoncino in it, a little bit of uh, freshly ground pepper would be wonderful. And ladies and gentlemen, this is my favorite pasta. As a matter of fact, these two are my favorite pasta dishes. Ah, when it comes to life, when it comes to cooking, remember, it's all about passion. As for me, I know that my passion has been fulfilled because every once in a while I get to cook things that bring me back to my youth, to my childhood, to when I was a little boy. And when I do that, I do the same thing that I used to do. A lot of people don't know how to twirl a spaghetti. It's a soft roll, something like this, in which you look at it. And then you prepare yourself in anticipation. You know that there is the cheese, the pepper, and all the other flavors. They're so masterfully combined. But one of the greatest culinary minds of the world, as you know it, that person would be me. Of course, since it's my show, I might as well give myself a little bit of a compliment. And then, then if you're lucky. But if you're really, really lucky, there is this. And my mother went to the market. The street food, the street, 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 street food will mix the most. I love it. All kind of street food. You know Taiwan. You know there's, there's food everywhere, and the Ch Taiwan sausage is well known, and the barbecue pork, the chicken and duck, and noodle, wonton pastry. You name it. That's kind of dishes I like this to have. Remember the most. And what you least expect it? What's your favorite food? My favorite food got to be a pasta. Cake. Oh yeah, I make the best uh, pasta. No, no, say that again. Do it with your hand again. Look, pasta. <laughs> Are you sure you're Chinese? I don't know. Sometimes because you're moving all over the place like me. I know. What I you do. need is a beard, maybe a ponytail, and you and I look well, like twins. I lost twins. the 15 years of being watching your show. You inspire a lot. This is probably one of the things I learned from you. Hey. <laughs> no, I. To that, you have to see the show and to see the segment that we did together. That is both a salad and a wonderful beef uh, dish that, to this very day, inspires me uh, quickly. What is a food that you hate? Well, basically, I don't hate any food. Any food, I eat it. However, there's some dishes I dislike it, such like uh, blue cheese, wolfer, I can't stand that. Uh, stinks, stinky tofu, maybe you don't like it. I love it. So that dish is the, the you know, cultural difference. But, uh, you know, again. No, no, I, this is actually very important. I, I will share something with you. We had uh, Ken Ratman, a wonderful friend of mine from Abacus uh, restaurant in Dallas, Texas. And amongst the foods that he was listing, he said, I do not like peanut butter. Uh, you will be surprised how many different chefs sometimes don't like some very common foods oh, that they yeah. do on a daily basis. Um, 
for the rest of your life, for the rest of eternity, because I will not mention his age, but he's slightly older than me, in spite of the fact that he looks like he could be slightly. my younger brother. Uh, but if it was one food or one dish uh, that you could not do without, and you must have at least for the rest of your life, what would that one single thing be? I wish it never happened, but if you think of one thing, it's got to be rice. Right. I was born with rice. I was eating my, all my you know, life with rice. I will die with my rice.